In this video, we're going to learn about the HTTP response in the HTTP context object. In the previous video, we learned the basic syntax of the HTTP response protocol. The HTTP response. It has three different parts. Let's review. It has the request line that contains the version, status code, and status description. And then, same as the HTTP request, we have several lines of response headers. It may or may not. It could be zero. Right? So from zero to many different headers. And then after a space, we have our third part, which is the body. So in this video, let's jump into Visual Studio and observe all of these different parts in the HTTP context object. So let's go to our Visual Studio here. And let's comment out the code that we had for our previous lessons. And let's focus our energy on the context object dot response. And first of all, we see the status code right here. And you can see that the type of that is an integer. And then you can see we have headers. And this is similar to the request headers. It's a dictionary. You can access it. And you can see the body. The body, however, is a stream, right? We mentioned that previously. And in order to write to it, you can simply just say response.write like this. You cannot directly put stuff into it because it's a stream. Now, there's very common uh, response headers that you can directly access, for example, content type, right? You can specify the different content types, depends on the format of the body. All right, so let's delete this and let's uncomment the, the existing code. And we're going to use the HTTP response in our existing code. First of all, some of this code needs to actually return status code. For example, post here. When post is success, right? When we successfully post it back as a response. When we successfully process the HTTP post request, the response that goes back, it should be in a different status code other than HTTP 200. Because HTTP 200 is OK, and that is usually for the GET request. Okay, so if we don't specify anything, this is going to return as HTTP 200 OK. We can specifically specify that by saying context.response.status code. And we can specify it. But if we don't, then that's by default. For post, when we successfully add resource to the server, instead of using 200, we should say 201. And this represents uh, that re resource is successfully created. And when we successfully modify something, Usually, the status code should be 204, which is no content. Right? And we can do that right here. Instead of doing it here, we should actually do it here, like this. We specify that and then just return. And we're going to talk about different status code in the next video. Here, let's just play with it for a little bit. We have 201 for the post. We have 204 for the put. And let's run this and let's observe the result. All right. Our, we have our application running right over here. And if we go to our postman here and go to get employees, click on send, we get our default three different employees and we have 200. So this time we specifically specified the status code as 200. And we got it. All right, so let's try the HTTP post here. Let's add the third one, Tom Anderson, and click on send. Now we can see that we got 201 and the status description is created. It's created. So this is the response. So we can uh, observe the response in Postman here at the bottom part. Right, the bottom half of the screen. You can actually move this up and down, right? And you can observe the cookies. We didn't set the cookies, right? You can observe the, the headers 
and content length is zero. The server is Castro. Date is this. So body has nothing in it. We didn't write anything here. Therefore, there's nothing in it. But we can see the status code is two zero one, right? And we can do the same thing with update employee here. We're gonna update the third employee. Well, we're gonna call it with a different name and give it a different salary here. And let's click on that. Now we still get two zero zero, and that's a little bit weird here. So let's go back to our code over here, and I see the problem. So when we write to the response, remember this is a stream. So when we write it, it means that the response is already going back to the client from the server. So therefore, we have to move this line up. We need to specify the status code first before we write to the response. And if we run this again, we should be able to see information displays correctly here. So again, we're going to update the third employee to Tom Anderson, and we have the correct status code coming back in two zero four, no content. So that's how to access the status code from the response、uh, object here in the HTTP context. Now we can think about writing HTML. The in the browser, right? Because in the past we we have been writing pure text. So let's take a look at this root URL handling logic here. We write with character returns. So this is incorrect, or、uh, I mean not incorrect, but it's not proper way to write to the browser. The browser displays HTML naturally, so we we should specify HTML instead of just pure text. So then, how do we do that? How do we do that? So before we write any response, we need to specify the the content type in the header. So over here, we can say context dot response dot headers, and then we can say content type, and we can specify that as text slash. Okay. So if we do this, we want these text to display in a different way. Right, so instead of use character return, let's remove the character returns. Let's use a line break here in HTML. Right, in this case, the headers should be bolded. We can use HTML to do that, and then the key we can also bold it with HTML. And the last character return we can use br. That okay? Maybe we can do even something. Differently here, so we can use an ordered list. Okay, so here we're gonna write ul. We don't need the dollar sign in this case. So this is an order list, and after we write the key value pair here, we can have the closing ul tag here, and then over here we can specify the item li element at the very end here. Instead of using line break. We can use the closing li element. Okay, so this changed the display dramatically. Instead of writing pure text, we are actually writing proper HTML. So let's run the application and observe the result. All right, so we have our result right here. You can see that、uh, everything displays properly. We have、uh, headers highlighted. We have the key highlighted, right, and we have All of the headers displays as、uh, an ordered list, so this looks much better than the pure text. Now, if we go to F12 to see the developer tool here, and let's refresh the browser and highlight this. Now, let's take a look at the headers. Okay, response headers. We have content type right here. Specify this ourselves in the code, of course. We can go ahead and change all of these, all of these to HTML instead of pure text. But I don't want to waste time in the video. I'm gonna do that offline, and the in the source code that I attached in this video, you are going to see the changes. Okay, that's everything I want to show you in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.